Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Joe and Suzanne and Pam and, um, and Tracy and Chuck are also on board here today. And um, our, our topic today is updating um, personnel information on your library. But before we get started, I wanted to see, um, just ask a quick question. So here's the poll. It is, have you attended a previous Aspen Basics session? So just want to know if this is your first, or you not, don't remember. It's been, it's been a weird <laughs> couple of months, maybe you just don't recall. And it looks like everybody's completed it. So it looks like we have, um, I'll share these results. Most of you have attended and a couple of you have, this is your first one. So great. So this is number four. And uh, we try to pick a very kind of limited topic to focus on. And Pam and Suzanne are going to take it from here. So take it away. It's true. And Pam and Suzanne did not really coordinate of um, what they were each going to do. So, so it's up for grabs. But what we are going to cover today is updating library personnel and creating and editing positions and marking a position vacant. And I don't know, Suzanne, do you have a preference of what you might want to show or do you just want to watch? And I'll run through my handout real quick. I'll watch. <laughs> okay. So when you get the handouts, um, this you'll be able to follow along exactly what I'm doing here today. So the first step is logging into Aspen. And like Joe said, we assume people know how to do that, which I have done. And then you're going to come over to the right hand column in the little blue box over here and click on Aspen Admin. I'm assuming everyone's still seeing my screen. And if you weren't, someone would have said something. We so it takes seeing you your screen and excellent. We see your Aspen Admin page. Here. Perfect. So you will have the gray box that has your information in the center and you'll scroll down to update positions with the cute little wrench in front of it. So click on that. That's pretty much where everything starts today as I was preparing all this and kind of running through this and I will admit that I am not the great Aspen user so I had to learn a lot of this myself. So um, everything starts here in update positions which is pretty convenient just to remember that. So you're going to scroll down. I'm in as our Aspen test library. So you're going to find the person that you want to replace. You have a new person who's working in a position at your library. Um, the first thing I also had to figure out was if you have more than 10 people on your staff, you're going to want to come down to the bottom of the page and change the display so that you can see everybody on your staff. So since the Aspen Test Library has like 14 people now, um, I had to make it to show more than 10. Um, oh, I hadn't decided ahead of time who I was going to replace today. This was, I should have thought of that. Um, I don't know. There's so many likely candidates. I know. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yesterday I had to create a few people because I didn't want to take some people away. So I created the troublesome book woman, um, the know-it-all person in the position of know-it-all. Um, so we're going to replace her with someone else. So the little yellow stickies um, on the left-hand side are very handy also. And if you hover over it, it shows you that you're going to remove and replace. So I'm going to click on her, remove and replace. I did also learn that you need to put an end date in. So she's going to get finished today. Her day is done. And I do want to replace this with another person, which is already selected here. And then you click Save. And you wait a second while it, um, it thinks it brings up another screen. So if I know who's working in this position, in the know-it-all position now, I can select from this drop-down list. And everyone is in here. Uh, I I didn't, um, I didn't explain this one in my handouts, but if, a, if you hired a new person, you'd have to create a new person if they're not going to be in this list. But in 
practice position, I'm going to select somebody who's already in here. Probably whoever I come up to first, which I think is going to be, um, we had a, we had somebody clever in here too. Oh, like Melville Dewey is in here. We might want to check him. I think he qualifies as know-it-all. Yeah, I felt that way too. That's why I'm um, going to pick him. Yeah, Melville Dewey. So we will put him in this position. And then you're going to have to scroll down some more. You would, sorry, now that I've done it. Um, it's going to put in your library and most of your information already. So you can just check that all and scroll on down till you get to the Save button. And what is pretty similar for all of these fields that we're going through is um, if you, for some reason, your library isn't in here, you would select your library from the list and it would automatically put in your address for you. You don't have to fill that out. If your mailing address is the same as the physical address, you would click on that link here and it would automatically put this in for you also. If you want to fill in the hours that your person works and their hourly wage, you can. This does not display publicly, so nobody's going to see that, but you can put it in. But it can be handy as information, you know, because people do want to know what people in similar positions are being paid. And so if you help us collect that data, then we can help, you know, put it out. And it's not attached, you know, when, when we send it back out to you, it's not attached to any particular people. But, um, but you can know, you know, what are, what's the going rate for a know-it-all? <laughs> Yes. In Montana. And we know in this case it's twenty twenty dollars an hour. You know? right. Yes, that is really helpful information to have. Which so I'd that say is. that's pretty cheap for a know-it-all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We should probably increase his wages. And then when you're done, you always click save. And also I did find yesterday that if it didn't seem like it was saving, it's because I hadn't filled something out correctly, but I did. And when you get to the nice pink banner, you have the congratulations and there you go. You can review it if you want to. In case you feel like you might've done something wrong. So Mel uh, Dewey has my email address, you know, just so it's saying. So oh, really? It could, it could be my alter ego. Uh, oh, I see. Yes, that's very yeah, interesting. It's, it is interesting. Some of these emails have been kind of interesting. Um, I, I just, connection. Yeah, yeah. I always just go back to the Aspen admin and start it again. So that was putting in a new person into a position. The next step that I went through was to create and edit a position. In case you're doing something new. So again, you start with update positions. And then, oh, sorry, this is going to be something new. So you're going to create a new position. Clicking on that one. This is how I created um, the know-it-all at our test library. And this to me was a little confusing that you're going to select a person and then scroll down and fill in the position and the title and all of that information, your library and continue on. Um, that always confuses me a little bit. And also I would say too that if you're creating a new position and it's not, you're not putting someone who's already in Aspen, you would go through the create new person step also, which would, after you do that, would bring you back to this page with that new person's information here in the center. Um, I don't know if that's confusing to people or if that's helpful, or do you actually want to see, we can create a new person to someone can um, give me a good idea of a new person because I kind of used up all my creative thoughts yesterday when I was creating something. So if you can come up with a new person that we could create for this library, we can do it right here. And Smallville. Oh, excellent. People are killing me. I have to manage these lists. Well, we'll, we'll get rid of this person eventually. <laughs> or someday, I figured you'd want to go through that. 
Um, so the ones that have the little red dots, asterisks by them, those are things that have to be included. So I don't want to give somebody um, real. You can give her my email again, Jason. Oh, okay. It's too okay. small at, at public library or something. Yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll get Joe in there again because she should. Or she can get all her emails. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So she's going to work at this library, which happens to be the Aspen Test Library. And it's going to put all that information in for me. Now I've made this new person. I can save her record. And once that comes back, now she's here in the center. Now I'm going to give her a position at my library. We would select from the list of position type. So we can make her, um, yesterday I made a volunteer. I thought that was a pretty good thing too. And if I want, so then at my library, we call our volunteers something else. Maybe we call them fabulous people or um, bookshelvers or something. So whatever you call them at your library is what you would put in here. That makes sense for your library. And continue on. I'm still going to choose my library as the address and the address will come in here. And the mailing address is the same as the physical address. So I'm going to click that and it's all in there. We're not going to pay the volunteer anything. So I'm um, not going to put that in. Oh, the one thing that I did miss, oops, let's go back up. There is a start date, a begin date field. That's really helpful, especially for trustees. If you want to be able to keep track of trustee terms, um, a begin date is a really helpful thing. Oh, phone does have to be done. A begin date is also Didn't really helpful that. for a new director because then we know when they have to get their certification by because they have four years from their start date. So we do really like to see that information, although it isn't required um, mm -hmm. uh, for everybody, but for directors would really like to see it. So once you've got that all done, you can save that. And if I had missed the phone field, like I might have, um, it would have told me to correct it. So now you get the pink banner again, and that's always a good thing. So the last thing that I want to show here, and then we'll have people play around with whatever we need to do for you, is some high paying job that they want to go to, or they're retiring, and you need to, oh, my internet connection is unstable. How could that be? Yeah, we just lost your audio there for just a minute. Am I back now? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so go back to update positions. We're marking a position vacant in case that part, that part didn't come through. So we're going to scroll down to whoever it is that we need to replace. And in this case, we're gonna do the know-it-all Melville Dewey again. I think we should get rid of that director villain. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that one too. <laughs> um, I was, I was, I considered that yesterday. So we'll mark the um, position director villain as vacant today. So you go to the little yellow stickies again of remove and replace. And you pick an end date because they've ended sometime. This is replaced with another person. And this one took me a while to figure out, but I finally remembered how to do it. So we have this awesome position called vacant position. That's the one you're going to choose to mark a position vacant, obviously. So we're just going to scroll down because we're done. We have the all the information in here and we'll save. And now that position should be vacant. But I like their hourly wage. <laughs> 
so is that anything else we need to show here? Is that enough to get you started? Um, well, I was just going to kind of second that, you know, yes. I think, you know, early on, and one of the temptations is when you have someone leave, is to remove that position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if you do, then that means you have to go through the process of creating the position all over again. You, I mean, assuming you're going to hire somebody to fill it, like, you know, if you have an assistant director, and they leave, you know, instead of removing the position, if you leave the position and you just mark it vacant, then when someone new comes in, you just fill them into it rather than having to go through creating the position all over again um, and putting a person in it. And, and then also, um, don't ever remove the director <laughs> position. <you know? laughs> <Yeah>. Right, Chuck? <laughs> that, that makes it really difficult. Yes, that makes it very difficult. Well, and that's like you saw in that last example there. On most employees, you actually have two options. You can actually remove them or you can replace them. A director, you can only replace them. And if you do, please call me first. Um, because every library has to have a director. So if you're a director, you can only be replaced. You cannot be removed. Oh, thank you for explaining that because I wondered why did I not have the option to remove um, on that particular one? And it was because he was a director. Even if it was a villain director, I think he was, his position type over here in this column was director. director. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Aspen requires that there's a contact at each institution and that is usually the library director. So that's why it will not let you um, remove a library director. And it's just easier if it's with the director to just drop the line to Chuck and because we don't want to lose any of your library data. Mm -hmm. You can see at yeah. Aspen Test Library one, we're pretty top heavy. We have we a lot are. of directors. And <laughs> a lot of directors. <laughs> and only a couple of volunteers and, and one board member. Yes, we are top heavy in directors. The other reason it's easier for me to do a director is if you as a director replace yourself with somebody else. The problem is the first thing it actually does is it actually does remove the position to create the new position. So the second it removes it, you've actually removed your own permission to create the new director. Yeah. So it's a minor loophole working on it, but that's an edge case, so. And I just wanna add that as you're changing positions, um, you know, if somebody leaves your library and goes to another library to work, part of their record in Aspen, like their CE record stays with them when in their new position. So you're not really changing any of, of that when you change the position at your library. That individual's person record, their CE record, is, is, follows them wherever they go. So right. that's just important to know that person and position are different in, a little different in, in Aspen. That's all, say, Pam, any other questions? Let's see, I have um, nothing in the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording. Thank you so much. That was absolutely lovely and then we'll be on stay on the line um, for those of you who are here and just um, answer any other questions or or go to your library and give you a hand so thank you Pam and that's Susan. us short and sweet yep that's us